I was interested in meteorology when I was at school, you know, that's, so it was a natural sort of thing for me to go into the Met Office to work. And, uh, and it turned out all right, you know, I had a good, uh, good career, really. The Met Office used to be part of, uh, used to be part of the Air Ministry at one time in the old days, you know, and then the Ministry of Defence. But then it became an agency. So it then, then became sort of divorced from the government, and then the government then says, sort of washes the sounds of it and says, well, now you've got to go and earn your own money. It, it puts a, a clamp or, or, or builds a wall between itself and users of the data, which are, you know, which are people like um, you and me, you know, members of the public, who have already paid for the data to be collected. The whole of the meteorological network really was set up um, to, which relied then on um, on the amateurs for collecting rainfall, for collecting uh, temperatures and all that sort of thing. The meteorological community is, um, you know, is, is, is broad. It contains individuals whose other interests are very wide, you know, it's the same as any other group in, in society really, I would say. One tends to concentrate on the local data, you know, comparing um, stations in the area with your own readings, for instance. I can show you all these things, they're upstairs in my room, so Should we'll we go, go up. up. Would you like to come up? Yeah, let's see that. You can also see, um, I've got the satellite receiving equipment up there as well for um, weather satellites. No, the images that I collect are essentially from the uh, American Polar Orbiting Satellites, the newer ones. And there's one, you'll see one very shortly. And the satellites are going around all the time. Um, there are, at the moment, there are about three operational ones of, the, of that particular type. Um, and they orbit the Earth once every 90 minutes. So they're going around pretty quickly. Uh, seven kilometres a second they're travelling at. You need a dish. So I've got a tracking dish that uh, tracks the satellites. There's a satellite which is sending data at the moment here. Okay. This is the signal strength. It's about now to disappear below the horizon. It's up at the moment. It's just over Greenland. This is the picture that it's sending back. It's getting pretty noisy now because we're looking now through those trees nearly. I can just show you the images. So that uh, satellite was transmitting on five channels. It's the five spectral channels. It's, um, um, it's the sensors on board are viewing the surface beneath in, in fire spectral channels from um, close to the visible channel here to, to the far infrared channel there. Right, so if we take this bit here which is a, obviously a circulation over um, Holland. And I'm just going to take an observation, make an observation now, because I, I do one in the afternoon at 1500, which is coming up, um, and also at 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh, don't fall on your camera. I'll just take a reading on the barograph here. Yeah. 
The, uh, the other thing I'm going to do now is um, take a reading on the barometer, which is downstairs. It's called a Q pattern barometer, this one. the temperature. This is the, the dry bulb reading at the time there. That's the number of minutes since the start. Uh, that's the temperature. That's the wet bulb temperature. Uh, that's the humidity. That's the dew point temperature and that's the um, what's called the humidity mixing ratio which is the amount of water vapour in the atmosphere which is 4.5 grams per kilogram of air. If it's running continuously, then you don't, you're not going to miss anything. You can, you can use the data for sorry uh, for research or for um, you know, writing up interesting events. And that sort of thing. You know. mm. um, well, this is the long-term record for Wokingham, um, and it consists of data from stations in the area. Some of them in Wokingham town itself, especially after the turn of the 1900s time, turn of the. 20th century, but um, what I've done is um, I've combined them in, and normalised them into a, a data set which is comparable with the site at Embrook. So here we've got data, monthly data, for every year back to 1882 for Wokingham. So Good, so you've got all you need. You'll be able to spend uh, hours editing that.